Hey, and welcome back to Token Tech. Today, I'm finally going to be showing you guys how to undervolt your AMD graphics card. And the best part is you don't even need to download any software. So I know in my previous videos where I showed you how to undervolt your CPU, you had to go into the BIOS, which for some people is a little scary, or you had to download Ryzen Master, which a lot of you have noted is not the greatest piece of software. So today, we're just going to be using the AMD graphics driver to go ahead and undervolt. Now, if you don't have the AMD graphics driver, go to their website and download it. Just Google AMD graphics driver, and then you'll get to the website. You select your graphics card, download the driver, install it, reboot your computer, and there you go. All right, you always wanna have the up-to-date graphics drivers. It'll give you way better performance, trust me. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into it. So basically all you need to do is at the desktop, you go ahead and right click, hit AMD Radeon settings, and it'll bring you into it. Uh, oops, I always do that. Um, I hate that they put like a web browser in the driver. Yeah, I, there's a lot of issues here. We're not going to talk about it. What we want to do is click on performance. Right now, performance is going to show you all these statistics, right? Don't worry about that. My fans are not going crazy, unbelievably fast. It's that I have it water cooled, so nothing's plugged in, so that's what it reports. As you can see, my temperatures are good, water cooling, and it's idle. My power consumption is 32, clock speed, everything's normal here. And you can go here to see some stats, all right? And you can enable an overlay. I found it to be a little glitchy, which is why I have it off, but you can do that and it'll show you the real time stats while you're gaming, not what we're doing here. We're gonna go into tuning. Tuning is what we wanna do because we wanna undervolt our graphics card. Now, before I get too far into this, why are we doing this? So there's many different reasons why someone might wanna undervolt their graphics card. You could have a small form factor computer, which has worse airflow and so you want to reduce heat and by reducing power draw you're going to reduce heat and by reducing the heat you're going to reduce your fan noise because the fans won't have to spin up as much another benefit and this is possible it's not always guaranteed and it's going to vary from card to card but sometimes by reducing the voltage you know you reduce the heat and with less heat it can boost higher 50 megahertz 100 megahertz higher which can get you a couple of extra frames in games so you can actually see a slight performance boost by undervolting and never have to overclock all right now back into this into the driver when we're in tuning you have auto tuning which is a phenomenal feature that amd has dropped in now you can do a better job on your own for sure you can do that it's going to take a little bit of time and some testing but if you follow what they have here you actually get pretty much like I'd say maybe 70 75 percent of the benefit of just one click versus having to manually do it so you can click undervolt you're gonna hit proceed trust me it's totally fine it's gonna do a little scan basically do a lookup table find out where it thinks your card should fall um, this should not take that long I don't know why this is taking so long and there we go 1150 megahertz and I think that's a very conservative number but it's a number that they're saying okay you won't crash it won't be unstable uh, we're pretty sure that'll be fine. And with this number, 1150, I saw a very, very, very minor decrease in temperature. Now I'm water cooling, so that might be why I didn't see a bigger de decrease in temperature. You might see a bigger change if you have a blower style card or a dual fan card. But what I did see was an increase in performance. Now I'm not talking about games, I'm talking about 3D Mark. Running 3D Mark. I was able to do some benchmarks and with just this one click I was able to get about 200 extra points on um, I believe it was uh, oh man what's it called it's the the spy time spy or something like that um, that one I got a couple hundred extra points which was pretty substantial for something that took literally 10 seconds that's pretty good I found that overclocking gra GPU doesn't do much it just increases power consumption and heat but I didn't get any more performance from and overclocking RAM gave me about another 200 points in um in time spy all right so i find that those two are the best ones to do but you can't do them at the same time that's the unfortunate part but this is more about undervolting so we're not going to talk about overclocking the ram something that you can do though is you can just go ahead let's just reset this all right everything's back to normal click on manual when you click on manual you're going to get a whole bunch of options now we're not going to worry about anything except for this one right here gpu tuning Okay, you could mess with power limit, you could mess with your VRAM, you could mess with the fan curve. I'm not going to touch any of those. Today we're just focusing on undervolting. So we're going to go ahead and enable that. We're going to get some, some, some controls here. However, these are very, very simple controls and don't really help that much in my opinion. So I like to do advanced controls. And now we have this graph, which I also think doesn't really help that much. So don't get confused by that. Hit this right here where it says fine tuning. Now we're talking. We have some knobs that we can turn or 
essentially values we can punch in. We're not going to worry about these two because these two are already so low um, that it's fine. We're talking more about when you're gaming. It's going to be in P3. This is what we're talking about. Now, I'm not going to touch the frequency. You could mess with frequency if you want. I'm not going to touch it. What I'm going to do is go in here, and we're going to just type in 1100. Okay, I'm going to say that most graphics cards, most 5700 XTs at least, can do about 1100 millivolts at stock frequencies. Okay, and you're not going to see a drop in performance, and you might even see a boost if you have an air-cooled card. If you have a water-cooled card, you might see a little bit boost in performance. Like, even I saw a small boost in performance, and I'm water-cooling. But 1100, I think, is a safe bet. Now, what you need to do, just like when you're under undervolting or overclocking anything, CPU or GPU, or even RAM, you need to test it. Now, how do you test it? Well, you can run things like 3D Mark. 3D Mark has stress tests, so you can do different stress tests with stress different parts of your graphics card more and see if it's stable. Another way you can stress test, play your games. Play all of your games. Any, all your favorite games, whether they're, you know, story driven, online multiplayer, MMOs, whatever, graphically intensive or not, whatever games you play, play them and play them a lot. Play for hours. I'm, I'm telling you, go ahead. This is the one time that you can play for hours and say that you're doing something other than gaming, saying that you're testing out your hardware, making sure that it's it runs the way it's supposed to. Play it for hours because you need to know if it's stable or not. And if you get a crash or blue screen or the game crashes, go ahead and bump this up a little bit. All right, so we have 1100. You could go to like 1115. Uh, Maybe that's all you need. Maybe you just need a little bit more. You could go 1125. All right. Now, what I'm trying to get across to you here is that 1200, which is the stock, stock it's 1200, is a lot. And 99% of graphics cards don't need 1200. Almost all 5700 XTs and almost all AMD graphics cards in general can undervolt like a champ. I used to have a Vega graphics card and man, that thing could undervolt. Okay. So you can undervolt them usually to at least 1150, but usually even less than that, closer to 1100. Again, 1100, I think 1125 is a safer number. All right. I think my card is pretty stable at 1125, but every card's going to be different. So your card. You might have a 5700 XT, but it's going to be different from my 5700 XT, okay? So you're going to want to play with that. Change the value, test. If it's unstable, if it crashes, if you get worse performance, that's unstable too. Go ahead and increase the voltage a little bit. 10 millivolts, you know, 15 millivolts, something like that. And keep going up and up until you find that it's rock solid stable and you're good to go. Okay, that's going to be how you do that. Again, I do prefer doing benchmarks that I give you a score because you could run 3D Mark like Time Spy or, you know, um, Fire Strike or even like Super Precision. And if you see your score get worse, then you've gone too far. Time to pull back, time to increase the voltage and see what happens. Your score should stay the same as stock or get better. If it gets worse, you're doing something wrong. Unless, of course, that's your goal and then you're just going to be you know, pulling clocks down, but that's a whole other video for a whole other topic. This is how to do it in Windows with an AMD graphics card. I don't have an NVIDIA graphics card. I don't really plan on getting one, and the graphics card market sucks right now, so I'm probably not going to get one anytime soon if I were to get one. And on top of that, uh, there's also Linux to think about. Now, I'm still learning how to do it in Linux. Um, I thought it was easier than it actually is. So once I figure that out, I'll make another video showing you how to do it in Linux. Um, if anyone knows how to do it in Linux and wants to give me a link or put me in the right direction so I can learn, feel free to type that in the comments. If this helped you out with your AMD graphics card, please let me know down below. Um, and if you have any questions, again, let me know in the comment section below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.